Presenting the King of the Duplicators. This is where the King of the Duplicators works, the vast studios of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. This man is capable of duplicating the face of practically anyone. For instance, as these black and white photographs show, he can make a leading man into Abraham Lincoln or a Natalie Wood into an old woman or a Tony Randall into Dr. Lau. Bill Tuttle, head of the makeup department for MGM for 30 years and the only makeup man to receive the coveted Oscar. Wayne Thomas, here on the scene with Bill, as he is covering this actor's face with hot wax. Bill, why are you doing that? Well, we have to do a character makeup on him. As a matter of fact, he's playing Humpty Dumpty. And uh, I have to take an impression of his face first in order to model the necessary effects to produce Humpty Dumpty. Later on, we'll show you exactly what happens in the following steps. But right now, this poor man has to sit motionless for about 30 minutes, I think, while he covers his face with a wax. Uh, is that similar to candle wax, or is it a special kind of wax? This is a very special wax, uh, Wayne. It's called Negacol. And it has to be heated in a double boiler for about three hours in order to break it down to this consistency. And then it's cooled to a comfortable temperature so that it can be applied directly to the face. OK, Bill. At this point, Bill Tuttle has covered our actor's face with a hot wax. Everything except the nose hole, so he can breathe, of course, and little eye slits. The next step is to cover the uh, wax with a plaster of Paris. Bill will explain later exactly why he's doing that. He's so busy right now, I don't want to interrupt him. But this is done for almost all actors and actresses that come into this department to have a character makeup applied. What are you doing now, Bill? We're ready for the liftoff. Off there. comes the mask. Inside, the wax has made a perfect impression of every line and, and facet of this man's face, right? You see, the reason we use wax, Wayne, we get a much more accurate impression than you do with just plaster of Paris alone. And the plaster of Paris on the outside is for what purpose? It's just to support the wax. I see. Now you have a perfect shell. The next step is filling the mask. Bill, what are you doing at this point? We're now pouring plaster into the impression that we just took. Mm -hmm. And this will make an exact replica of the actor's face when we peel the outer shell off, correct? That's right. Why is all this being done? Well, as we mentioned before, when an actor or an actress needs a character makeup, a lot of extra things, of course, that have to be done. And rather than have them sit here in the makeup department by the hour, they work on the mask. We'll show you what we mean in a moment. Now the plaster is hardened inside the shell, and Bill's taken most of the shell off. Here's the last piece. Here is the actor that you saw at the beginning of our program, his mask completed right down to the last wrinkle, all ready for you to fashion the character makeup of, what was it, Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty. Fantastic. Let's put that over there and show some of the masks here in the MGM mask room of some of the famous people that you uh, had masks made of so that you might uh, form a character makeup on them. Here we have Doris Day, Martha Ray, Jimmy Durante, could you mistake that? Uh, and above him, Fred Astaire, and the King, Clark Gable, Paul Newman, and uh, let's see, who might that be? I think this is the one you made of me a little while back. I'll take my glasses off so they can get a comparison of the mask you made right on my face not too long ago. By golly, when you put that wax on, it felt as if I were being smothered in lime. Now, these masks are what you use to form these different character makeups, correct? That's right. For instance, once you used a mask of Anne Francis. This was in a Twilight Zone. In a Twilight well, she Zone She played a mannequin. Now, this head was mounted on a mannequin body. And this, of course, in vivid color, looks exactly like Anne Francis, right down to the beautiful eyes. This is one of the uses of the mask that you make here. One of the most dramatic ones 
was the picture of Dorian Gray that goes back a few years. Take that cover off and let's see something that's quite startling. Remember Herd Hatfield in the picture? Here he was uh, as a young, handsome, leading man. And then the, what happened to him here, Bill? That's a slight case of dissipation, to say the least. And then the finale and of the picture? Complete deterioration. And, and to begin with, you made a Mac, uh, mask of Herd Hatfield's Herd Hatfield. face and then made these different appliances on the mask so that he would look like this character. Okay? Right. Now let's go in the other room and see how this is done. Now we're showing the mask, and Bill, you're modeling on it. What are you doing? This is for Arthur O'Connell in the power. Mm -hmm. He gets caught in a centrifuge with his face on the outer rim, and it causes his tongue to pull out and all the facial features to move out. What's the next step after this? The next step is we make a mold of this, as we have done for some ears. Now this is in the, for the extraordinary semen, where we have some Dayak natives with elongated earlobes. I see. And we have the molds all set up here, and we're about to pour sponge rubber into the mold. Charlie Schramm, your assistant here, is filling the little molds with liquid rubber. Now you put a top on, I guess, huh? The top of the mold goes on like so, and it's weighted to create a pressure on it. We have to move very fast on something like that because it sets up very rapidly. We have now filled the molds with the latex. They've gone into the oven to bake. How long, Bill? About two and a half to three hours. And then when you open those up, you have little rubber earlobes that'll go on the natives. I have one of the ones that you already cooked and is ready to go. Please Let's try that on you, okay. will you? It fits to the lower part, is adhered with spirit gum, and then this is all colored to match. So it looks as if the man, the actor, has a, a long ear, as the natives would in that part of the world. Now, to kind of wind things up today, I thought Bill Tuttle ought to put one of these appliances on me. And what have we selected, Bill? This is a bald cap. In other words, when you get this on, glued down around the edges, and I guess covered with makeup, it's going to look as if uh, I had nothing on the top of my head. So hold on to your seats. We're going to see how I look completely bald. Well, it looks like he's just about finished. Bill, what have you accomplished so far? You put it on, glued it down, then what? Blended in the edges and then applied the makeup color to the entire cap. Now, this is just one of the many appliances, as they call them, the things that are added to an actor's or an actress's face to make them look as some other character. In other words, he duplicates on them the face of another person, or perhaps in some cases, an animal. This time, I'm an old man, out of hair. And I think we're just about out of time. Bill, it's really been a pleasure. I think we've learned a great deal about the makeup department and how these fantastic makeups are done. Head of the makeup department for MGM for 30 years, Bill Tuttle. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wayne. And thank you, too.